This is Adam with Wholesale Septic Supply. Today we are going to have Jacob um, talk about the components of the linear diaphragm pump, some of the changes that have happened over time uh, to the design of the pumps and the cores to make them more energy efficient, and what happens and why the red dust uh, starts to appear and some magnetic field stuff. So I'm going to hand it over to Jacob, and he is a engineering student at Texas Tech going into his fourth year, so um, he knows a lot. It's astounding. So we're going to let him talk to you guys now. All right, this is Jacob. So a lot of aerobic septic systems will use a linear diaphragm air pump to aerate their systems. So today we're gonna to go a little bit more in depth into how these machines operate. So after you plug it into a power supply, you're gonna have a current coming through this wire here. Current coming through this wire will cause this assembly here to become an, an electromagnet. Now you'll have two electromagnets in this machine, one on either side of a permanent magnet here. So once you turn this into an electromagnet and this one into an electromagnet, you're gonna push this permanent magnet to one side. So this permanent magnet is attached to two diaphragms, kind of like this. So the one, there'll be one on the other side here. So once it pushes, once the magnetic field pushes on this permanent magnet, it's gonna flex that diaphragm right there, kind of like how you're seeing it flex here. And it'll flex in and out many times a second. And that's how it's pushing air through the system. Now the way it changes the magnetic field to push it the other way is we use alternating current. Basically what that means is you're gonna have a current that's changing directions basically in this wire, which is gonna change the magnetic field coming out of this electromagnet. Now when that happens, you're gonna push this magnet to one side and then the magnetic field changes. So it's gonna push it to the other side. Now this electromagnet will continuously do that. So you're gonna have this permanent magnet move back and forth continuously. And then you're just gonna push the air in and out of the system. So that's basically how this will operate. Now, observ observant viewers will notice that this core here is made out of many, many thinly sliced sections. So the reason that they do that is to alleviate some of the inefficiencies that you get with heat that develop in the system. So as you move the current in different directions, you're going to cause uh, that change in magnetic field that we talked about earlier, but that'll cause some heat to build up in this iron. So they make many, many thinly sliced sections and stick them together to alleviate some of that. Something else you might notice is this little brick that's on this uh, the wire here. Now that is your thermal switch. So if something happens to your pump and it's overheating, this will cause it to shut down before more damage is dealt to your system. Now, these pumps don't use oil, so you don't have to oil them, and they run continuously. So you're just gonna have this magnet coming back and forth just continuously, it's just gonna keep running. Now, as these pump age, you're gonna have these diaphragms will continuously flex in and out. Now, eventually those are gonna fatigue and they're gonna break. So they're not gonna last forever, you can have them last years, but eventually they are going to break. Now, when that happens, this permanent magnet's gonna move to one side, like much farther than the engineers who designed it intended. So these little tabs on the top here or what are what's gonna catch that safety switch on top. So it's gonna move to one side, strike the safety switch, and it's gonna shut down the pump before this magnet has a chance to damage the pump farther. So basically, when your pump shuts off, you're gonna pull it apart, you're gonna find these diaphragms, and then you are going to uh, get a rebuild kit, slap those diaphragms back onto it, and then you'll be good to go usually. Now, when you open up a pump, and you see this iron oxide build up here or rust, you can see it by this red dust building up in here. Typically, that's going to be coming from your magnet here. So over time, you're going to get contaminants into this system and it's going to cause this to rust. Now, as this magnet's moving back and forth in a fairly straight line, that rust is going to affect the magnetic field coming off of it and it's going to cause it to interfere with these electromagnets in a little bit different way than the engineers designed it intended. So it's gonna cause it to waver. That might cause these diaphragms to wear out quickly. So when you're going through diaphragms uh, faster than you usually are, then that's probably a sign that something's up. Now, another place where rust might build up is these iron cores. So 
really you can't replace these. You can't buy extra ones of these. And even if you could, it's more time, it's more time and money than it's worth to put these into it. So once you start seeing a lot of red dust build up in your system, that's typically a good indication that a rebuild kit isn't for you and that you probably should be in the market for a new pump and not a rebuild kit. Now, in newer models, they're trying to get more energy efficient. So here's a more recent model here. So you'll notice that the orientation of these laminated um, iron sections here have changed their orientation and there's just one section on the bottom joining the two sides. Now I'll make an educated guess as to why. So when you have the changing in magnetic field, the more iron you have here is going to resist that change and you're going to have um, some inefficiencies develop there. So newer models are trying to use less iron so that they're trying to minimize that resistance to that changing magnetic field so that you'll have a more energy efficient pump. Now, so you can look a little bit more in depth as to what's happening. So this is another more energy efficient model. You can see by the orientation of these metal sections here. These are the coils that we were looking at earlier. But right in here is kind of that space that the magnet goes into. So your magnets, when it starts wavering, it's not wavering a whole lot. So I was just trying to illustrate earlier the kind of movement and how it'll deviate. So you'll have current come through this wire and that'll create an electromagnet. So you'll have one on either side of the permanent magnet that goes in here. So once you have that alternating current, it's gonna cause that permanent magnet to move back and forth. But if one of those diaphragms on one of the sides breaks, one of those tabs will catch this safety switch up top. So that'll cause it to move to one side and that'll shut off the pump. All right, and that's pretty much the basics of how these uh, linear diaphragm aerators work. Thank you for your time. So I'm gonna to touch base on some of the materials. So um, you have pumps that, that vary in price, okay? The reason that you'll have um, High blows, Fuji Max, and and things like that that are they're more expensive than other pumps is because there is a lot more time that goes into them and the materials used are much higher quality than some other pumps. So here's a magnet from High Blow. We broke it I'm right there, uh, playing with it because uh, magnet likes to grab things. So that's a magnet from High Blow. It's neodymium. You can tell it's a shiny. There's a special process for the neodymium to go through. There's different processes, different neodymiums go through. So it doesn't actually corrode because if you don't do it correctly, it can actually corrode faster. So um, this is an iron fire out magnet, but you can just tell that the craftsmanship on this, it's rougher. Uh, it's not as, um, it's not as good. Okay, it's not anywhere close. So the where the magnet is, I don't want to get too close to my phone because it will ruin it. Uh, there's just more, there's a hundred times more care that goes into uh, assembling the high blow uh, components than there are uh, the other manufacturer's components. So the, the <clears throat> metals that are used and things like that are also better. So you'll get <clears throat> out of one of these units, 10 years, no issue. It's not uncommon to open these up after 10 years and there's still no red dust. On lesser manufacturers, it's not uncommon to open them up in, in eight months, there's you know iron oxide or rust already um, building up. It's just because they haven't spent the time figuring out the magnetic fields, they haven't put the time or the effort into uh, figuring uh, everything out. They just haven't, it's been slapped together where your Japanese manufacturers have spent countless years on this so there's inside of the chamber block so you can see the different valves there's all there's a lot of thought and uh engineering that goes into them so when you do spend more money on an aerator uh you usually save money because you'll get we haven't sold a rebuild kit on one of these the fuji mac yet and i haven't had a warranty one yet it may, maybe two and there's there's tons containers of them so thousands of them thousands of them um, it just doesn't, um, they just work. So they, they do what they're intended to do. So, uh, you need to think about that because on a cheaper pump, you're going to pay less, but then a year later, you'll be buying another one and you could have just bought a higher end pump for 
less than the cost of two of those and been done uh, and have your pump for 10 years. So think about that when you're making a choice. We hope this explains everything a little bit better to you on the principles of it, uh, why certain things happen in the pump, and we are happy to answer any questions you might have. And once again, this is Wholesale Septic Supply.